Okay, I just spent the last 10 minutes recording this video and then I realized I didn't turn on the gain on my microphone, so it didn't record. Fail! Okay, so this is attempt number two. If you're a perfectionist like me, even the smallest of things can get under your skin. One of those is to do with Patcher and Patcher's thumbnails. Now, Patcher is a plugin that you can get with any version of FL Studio, and it's a plugin that you use on your mixer insert. Essentially, what Patcher does is it's a way of creating your own custom chains that you can insert onto any of the buses. If you're a regular FL Studio user, you can see that you're restricted to eight mixer inserts, but Patcher allows you to add as many plugins as you like. So essentially, you could have 30 inserts uh, on your mixer bus, but with only in one instance of Patcher. For the purposes of this demo, I just have a single plugin that's inserted into Patcher. So you've got the FL Studio input here. All your tracks will go via Auto-Tune, which is my example, VST, and then to the output. So if, for example, you were mastering your own project, you could have, you know, um, uh, an EQ, a compressor, you know, maybe some analog emulations of tape machines, and you can run everything through those plugins and then back out onto the output. I just want to give a quick shout out to Reflex over at ImageLion. He actually helped me fix this problem. Well, actually, it's not really a problem. It's more a user error. Uh, I posted a thread on the forum. I think it was early last week. And Reflex replied within a few hours to let me know how to overcome my OCD problem. Uh, for me to demonstrate this again, I will, I've, I've gone back into one of my old projects and I've taken a screenshot of the the tiny issue that was getting under my skin. What that was is instead of the thumbnail looking like the VST's own interface, it looked like a strange plug socket. Now, if, you, if you've got like 10, 20 plugins inserted into Patcher and you've got 10, 20 pictures of a plug, it becomes a little frustrating. So the way to overcome this is you need to open a copy of the plugin on, the, on any of the mixer channels. So I've got Auto-Tune opened here. If you go to the plugin settings, or sorry, plugin options up here, um, and then go down to make editor thumbnail, what that'll do is FL Studio will take an internal picture of the plugin's user interface. And you can see there, and you can also hear the picture, uh, the, the sound of a camera going off. So it's created a picture of the thumbnail. And then just, just imagine that was a plug socket. The image of the plugin's interface will now show. If you want something a little more permanent, you can add it to the plugin database. So over here, you can segment your plugins into folders. So for example, I have all my plugins separated into different areas. So you've got like limiting, you've got pitch correction, saturation, and so on. Now I, I find this the easiest way to find plugins of a particular area all in one place because it may be that you have a few favorite EQs, you know, an, an EQ for drums, an EQ for vocals, and you're, you're not gonna remember all the plugins off the top of your head. Instead of going through the traditional FL Studio uh, plugin searches, you can create a plugin database on, on the uh, left-hand tree here, and you can assign each of those EQs to their own folder. So example is DS's, I have, well, <laughs> funnily, uh, in the, Funnily enough, I actually added auto-tune into this folder on the previous video that didn't record. So that's why that's in there, because that's obviously not a DSR. Just to repeat the demonstration I gave in the original video, I'll do it in the doublers folder instead. So in the doublers folder, I've got a doubler plugin here that's from Waves. If you go to auto-tune, left-click plugin options, and then go to add plugin database. Uh, you've got the name of the folder here, which tells you where it's going to be added to. Click OK. And then the plugin is added to that folder. If you want to add it to multiple folders, you can just open another folder down here. If, for example, you have a compressor that also does some coloring, so you could open compression and the coloring folders, plugin options, add to plugin database, and it'll add it to both folders. From here, you can then just drag and drop the plugin onto the mixer insert. So I can just drag 
the DSR, for example, can strap that over. And it adds the DSR to the mixer track. And that is that. If you like the video, please hit the subscribe button on screen for future videos. And drop me a comment below if there are any particular areas or plugins you'd like me to cover in the future. Peace.